Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the 2020 Beef Improvement Federation Symposium online event. Um, my name is Bob Weber, and uh, I'm here at Kansas State University, and uh, we'll kind of be uh, flipping the levers and uh, uh, running the knobs today and uh, uh, serve as Central Region Secretary for BIF and, and soon to be uh, Executive Director. Um, First, I uh, want a special uh, thanks to my supporting team here at K-State. They're sitting across the room. Um, Lois Schreiner and Angie Denton and Rachel Waggy are all uh, all here and have been a great help uh, getting this pulled off. Um, couldn't have done it without them, so thanks, uh, everybody. Um, appreciate that a, a bunch. Um, as we get uh, started on this year's uh, symposium, um, uh, we've uh, had uh, just a tremendous outpouring of uh, support. Um, and uh, we'll do some sponsor recognition, but we've also had a huge response from uh, attendees uh, here in the US and around the world. We had, uh, when I checked just before uh, a kickoff here a few minutes ago, um, about 1,060 registrants from 18 different countries. And uh, so we certainly appreciate uh, uh, everybody joining us in, in the new format uh, for this year's um, BIF meeting. We'll have uh, um, a welcome from uh, 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 Mr. Tommy Clark. Clark. Tommy's uh, our current BIF president and uh, um, sent uh, these comments that he asked us to share um, on his behalf and, and welcome uh, for our opening symposium. Welcome to the 52nd Beef Improvement Federation Convention. This 2020 event was scheduled to be held in Kissimmee, Florida hosted by the Florida group who had put together quite an interesting program and we were all looking forward to being in Florida this week. However, due to the COVID-19 scenario that we have all had to endure, the plans started to evolve with Dr. Jane Parrish, Dr. Bob Weber, the Florida group. We all came together and determined that the best opportunity for us was to move to an online symposium. This will provide many of you an opportunity that may could not have attended otherwise to be able to participate. As of last week, Dr. Bob Weber informed us that we had over 900 participants registered from 14 countries. Whether this is your first BIF convention or one of many, I think you will find that quite a program has been assembled for us to partake in the next few days. Kicking off today with the Young Producer Symposium will expose us to ideas from some seasoned veterans. Those of us who are usuals at the BIF conventions will miss some of the person-to-person -person camaraderie, but we will not be shorted on any of the exposure of content and material. I know that in the past, I've left every BIF convention with a re-energized outlook on our industry. As we go forward, I understand that more than ever, this improvement of beef cattle is a journey. And as we continue on that journey, we have lots of room to work and I look forward to the next steps as are being outlined in this week's symposium. As we go through the next several days of presentations, each of us will gain perspective from the presenters that will be thought provoking. When the opportunity arises, do not hesitate to engage, reach out, participate, as those experiences really are beneficial to each of us that are in attendance. Thank you for your participation and attendance. I look forward to each of us walking away with a better grasp of where we're going in our industry. Welcome to the 52nd. Thank you, Tommy, and uh, we appreciate uh, uh, your leadership over the last uh, uh, the last year, and certainly um, the six years you served as a regular board member uh, for BIF, and that uh, that leadership and uh, experience is, is much appreciated, and we look forward to having you continue to join our ranks as past president. 
Um, next, I'll ask uh, uh, Bridget uh, Stice to come on board. Uh, Bridget was the chairman of uh, the Florida uh, host group and uh, did tons of background and, and legwork um, as we moved um, um, through the year and getting ready for, uh, for the BIF meeting uh, to be held in Florida. And uh, um, I'm sure uh, no one more disappointed that we couldn't make it to Florida than, than Bridget. I know our whole um, team here at K-State and my family was looking forward to uh, coming and seeing you there in Florida, Bridget. But uh, um, first off, thanks uh, again for all of your uh, work and support uh, getting us to this point. Uh, your team had a huge role in building the, uh, the general session and young producers symposium um, schedules and programs. Of course, all the behind the scenes work um, in terms of fundraising and logistics uh, in Florida that had to be, uh, be canceled. Um, but we look forward to uh, hopefully joining uh, you in Florida again uh, in a few years and I uh, would ask you um, to come on and, and make a few comments, please. Thank you, Dr. Weber. And we certainly uh, miss having the opportunity to get to see everybody here in Florida. Um, on behalf of the BIF, or on behalf of the University of Florida and the Florida Host Committee, uh, we would like to thank the BIF leadership for selecting the Sunshine State to host the Beef Improvement Federation Research Symposium and Convention. It was with very heavy hearts that we had to decide to cancel the physical meeting due to COVID. Uh, if it is any consolation, though, this week's weather is rainy and steamy, so you probably aren't missing out on that. I uh, would like to commend the BIF leadership, including Dr. Jane Parrish, Dr. Bob Weber, Lois Schreiner, Angie Denton, Josh White, Mr. Tommy Clark, and the executive board for having the innovation and adaptability to transform the physical meeting to this week's virtual platform, which exemplifies BIF's longstanding history of progressive thinking. Florida, where the beef industry began, that was our conference slogan. We were honored to have the opportunity to share our heritage and diversity and to showcase our advancement in genetics that exemplify our industry. When most people think of Florida, they think of our theme parks and miles of beautiful beaches. But what most don't realize is that Florida is the birthplace of the U.S. beef industry. When Juan Ponce de Leon brought the first small herd of cattle to ever step hoof on the continental U.S. right here to Florida. Our ranching history continued with the Spanish missionaries and the Native American tribes and so on to become the rich ranching culture that we are proud of today. While our parks and beaches drive the largest economic contributor to Florida's economy, which is tourism, the second and third economic drivers are agriculture and international trade. It is in times like these that we are experiencing now amidst the pandemic that Florida is even more reliant on its agricultural contributions. Equally significant to Florida's economy and contribution to the U.S. food supply is the contribution of ranch lands to our precious environment. Florida has more pasture lands than the total land area of Massachusetts. While urban encroachment threatens that land every day, Florida ranchers work hard to educate its urban neighbors about the value of the lands they steward. Florida's ranch lands positively contribute to water supply, air quality, wildlife habitat, and great outdoor recreation. Florida is primarily a cow-calf state and is home to nine of the 25 largest cow-calf operations in the U.S. The largest U.S. cow-calf operation is located less than an hour away from the major tourist attractions like Walt Disney World and Universal Studios. The cattle industry in Florida is a robust and dynamic industry rich in history but adept at incorporating new technology. Florida ranchers have utilized data and tools that have resulted from valuable research and the work of organizations like the Beef Improvement Federation to make genetic adv advancements that have assisted in breeding cattle that continue to contribute to not only Florida's economy, but our environment. The Florida Host Committee was excited to share all of this with you, and we hope to have the opportunity to possibly make that a reality in the future. We would like to especially thank the Florida Cattlemen's Association and Foundation for being our greatest and earliest supporters of this endeavor. On behalf of the University of Florida and the Florida Host Committee, including Dr. Matt Hersom, Dr. Todd Thrift, Dr. Tim Marshall, Dr. John Arsington, Rachel Garland, my husband, James Dice, and myself, I would like to again thank the BIF leadership for the possibility of hosting the BIF conference in 2020. We hope that you have a great conference this week. 
Thanks so much, Bridget. Uh, we appreciate those uh, comments very much. And again, all the uh, all the work you and your team have put in uh, um, to get us to this point and the uh, um, uh, opportunities in, in Florida are astounding and in, in your beef business there. I know from uh, a personal experience is uh, just a really fascinating part of the uh, economy there. And uh, we do look forward to, uh, to visiting and, and joining your group um, there soon. So Bridget, thanks so much. And uh, we hope you'll uh, join us for the rest of the program this week. And uh, if we can ever be of help, uh, please, please reach out. Okay, our next uh, um, segment here is is just a bit of, uh, of sponsorship Hello. work and uh, our sponsorship recognition. And um, um, we had uh, the good fortune of uh, many of our longtime uh, supporters um, came alongside uh, the online version of the symposium and provided uh, financial support. And uh, today's uh, patron level sponsor for the, the Monday uh, uh, segment of the program um, is Zoetis, and many of you will recognize recognize that name from the, uh, the animal health and genetics business, and uh, we certainly appreciate uh, their support. Um, if you'll go to, uh, when we're uh, done with the uh, webinar, to uh, the uh, beefimprovement.org slash symposium page, um, you'll find um, there a link to our, our sponsors and um, what I've sort of anecdotally coined the virtual trade show, um, a series of uh, web pages devoted to each of our sponsors, and uh, on that they have a variety variety of material and links to their website. And so it would encourage you to uh, explore uh, many of the unique offerings and uh, opportunities that these companies present and certainly thank them. Um, and in today's uh, segment, uh, Zoetis for their uh, financial support of BIF and our mission. Um, certainly uh, we couldn't pull this off without uh, them. And as you all know, um, registration for this year's symposium was free and that was all made possible by uh, the investment and support of companies like Zoetis. Us. So we're uh, joined next by um, some opening and welcoming remarks from uh, Dr. Jason uh, Osterstock. Hello. I'm Jason Osterstock, Vice President and Head of Global Genetics at Zoetis. On behalf of all of my colleagues, I'd like to welcome you all to the 52nd Beef Improvement Federation Annual Conference. Zoetis is very proud to be a patron sponsor of this event. Regardless of the circumstances, this will always be an ideal place for the most progressive in the beef cattle industry to come together, to seek knowledge, inspiration, and enjoy each other's camaraderie. Despite all the talk about distance over the last several months, I think it's also a great opportunity for us to think about coming together. And so I'd like to use this moment in time to thank all of those across the beef cattle industry for giving us the opportunity to enjoy a beef dinner with our families as we went through these challenging times over the last few months. And I can certainly say for myself, we had the opportunity to enjoy many more family dinners together than we might have otherwise. I think it's also a great opportunity for me to recognize my teammates that have helped to support the business and deliver our service over the last several months under difficult circumstances. And most importantly, our customers and commercial partners for all of their support as we work through this together, ensuring that we can continue to deliver quality genetic information to beef cattle producers to help inform decisions and making sure that we can do so in a manner that's safe and protects our families and communities. So with that, really excited to enjoy this conference with you, ready to kick my feet up, grab a pen and paper and, and pay close attention through the presentations today. Really excited for the great work that we're going to see on display throughout these sessions and look forward to the opportunity to visit with you all very soon. Thanks and enjoy. Great, and thanks again for uh, the uh, the support from uh, Zoetis. We certainly appreciate uh, appreciate that. Uh, um, again, uh, the financial support made this year's um, registration uh, free to all attendees for the BIF webinar. Um, 
our next uh, uh, spot was supposed to be a, a short talk and uh, welcome by Dr. Jane Parrish. Jane's uh, the current uh, Beef, Ex Beef Improvement Federation Executive Director and serves as Professor and Head of the North Mississippi Research and Extension Center. Um, as many of you know, uh, a little bit of tropical storm in the uh, southeast and in fact has uh, um, power knocked out and internet uh, at their station. So um, Jane asked me to pass along uh, her regrets uh, for not being able to join. I got a text from her here just a minute ago. Um, but uh, Dr. Parrish has served uh, uh, as our BIF Executive Director for the past five years and has done an outstanding job shepherding uh, our organization um, and really, I think, helped move us to the next level in terms of both the, uh, the program delivery uh, and a number of other improvements um, um, in, in BIF organizationally and, and the products that we've delivered to the industry and has done a great job of uh, uh, helping broaden and instill the mission of BIF across uh, not only our board, um, but producers uh, across the country and around the world. So Dr. Parrish, thanks so much for um, your uh, leadership and support over time. Um, a number of years ago, in fact, one of the, the things that came uh, into the BIF um, symposium uh, during Jane's tenure um, was the Young Producer Symposium. In fact, debuted at uh, BIF in, uh, in Mississippi, as I recall. And uh, one of the objectives of um, uh, the the Young Producer Symposium was to uh, attract uh, and provide some specific content for young producers um, to come to BIF. One of the things we'd noticed over time um, was that, uh, like many uh, uh, farm and ranch families, the uh, the, the older folks, so the parents and grandparents, um, were the ones that get to travel, but the young folks were the ones that stayed home and worked and handled the day-to-day -day management of the operation. And we thought a, a lot of the content uh, that we have at BIF um, would benefit those folks and um, we wanted to try and, and uh, tailor some uh, new content uh, to that audience. And so that was the birth of the Young Producer Symposium and uh, really envisioned as a way to uh, help uh, connect and network um, those young producers with each other, as well as uh, some mentors um, from uh, the broader BIF audience. And so um, the Young Producer has been uh, really well received and, and has great attendance each year. And uh, we look forward to uh, a sort of a little different Different flavor of speakers each year um, in that to help build the skill sets of our young producers um, as they work to uh, uh, move up in, in management in their own operations um, and businesses. And so, um, Jane, we're sorry with uh, technology didn't work out for you to join us today. I know uh, um, your heart and prayers with us. And uh, again, appreciate uh, all your support over time. Okay, as we uh, sort of transition here, that's our, our two speakers for today, and we're going to have uh, um, a series of um, uh, kind of updates from uh, our BIF leadership and uh, some presentations to, uh, to make. And so with that, we've got uh, some comments here by uh, Tommy Clark on the most recent uh, uh, election that uh, BIF had uh, here over the last week or two. We've had to sort of structure our um, annual business meeting, which usually occurs in conjunction with the symposium um, into a, a set of virtual formats. And so we've had a, a, a Zoom call to do our board meeting, um, but also use some online technology to uh, conduct our annual election process. And uh, here's Tommy um, with an update. When I think about the BIF organization, um, I can't help but reflect on the many people that are engaged and involved and creating an environment for us to be able to be exposed to so much information. And this year in particular, with the short time frame that we had to adjust, uh, absolute uh, amazing what the team, uh, especially at K-State has been able to do in terms of putting together this uh, online format. Uh, Dr. Bob Weber and Lois Schreiner and Angie Denton have uh, done an amazing job. When I think back uh, about my time, my uh, involvement with a terrific uh, boards of directors over the years, um, and really now I think about all that everybody has done, and this is a, a fully voluntary organization. Each year we have an election process. Um, 
represents the uh, producer members. There's eight of those positions. The Breed Association uh, members of the board. Uh, there's six of those. And um, this process goes through in the producer's aspect. There's a caucus. This year that was done uh, online and I know being from the east that it was uh, well participated we had uh, four very qualified candidates um, the new directors elected to serve on the BIF board were producers John Irvine from Manhattan Kansas Troy Marshall from Burlington Colorado Joy Reznicek West Point Mississippi um, the new association representative for Shane Bedwell the American Herpet Association Kelly Retaliac, American Angus Association, and Matt Wolfel, American Shorthorn Association. As we uh, move into the next roster of appointees and uh, elected positions, I'd like to uh, express appreciation to Lex Carter, uh, John Janot, uh, Dan Mosier, and Jack Ward for their years of service. Um, we also have uh, made the uh, appointments and adjustments. Um, Megan Rolf is moving into the Central Regional Secretary position. Uh, Dr. Matt Spangler will uh, occupy the uh, USDA Extension Service position that Megan vacated. Um, also, uh, Joe Mushrush from Strong City, Kansas has uh, been elected the president and Matt Perrier from Eureka, Kansas is your new incoming vice president. Mark Enns is our Western Regional Secretary and Dr. Bob Weber is assuming the role as Executive Director moving forward. I'd also like to give a shout out to Josh White who I'm understanding is uh, not able to partake in today's session. Uh, Josh is uh, hopefully in recovery from some back surgery. It's uh, not surprising to me with Josh's heavy lifting, not really the problem there, but anyway, hopefully by tomorrow, Josh will be ready to partake in some of the uh, information being distributed. I'd like to express my appreciation for the current board of directors and all that they have done, and especially to uh, Dr. Jane Parrish for the five years serving as our executive director. I uh, feel very uh, good about the future with Dr. Bob Weber at the helm and this new board of directors. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Tommy, for that uh, update and uh, the kind words. Uh, we're uh, uh, appreciative again of uh, your leadership um, over time with uh, the BIF board and one of our um, uh, long-term producer uh, board members, and, and we certainly uh, certainly appreciate that. What else? Um, just as a quick recap here, um, uh, so you've got it uh, reinforced. Uh, the election results again were um, Joy Resnicek from Town Creek Farms in West Point, Mississippi was elected um, to be the new Eastern Region um, producer representative and uh, had a great uh, slate of uh, candidates from uh, the Eastern Region. Um, uh, in the Central Region, uh, the uh, winner was John Irvin from here in Manhattan, Kansas. John's a, a Simtal Sim Angus breeder and uh, uh, local here to, to Manhattan. And then uh, in the Western region, uh, a, a face that will be familiar to, uh, to many of you, um, Troy Marshall, Marshall Cattle Company um, in Burlington, Colorado was elected in the Western region. In fact, Troy's um, uh, on his second uh, round of uh, appointments served uh, a number of years ago uh, on the BIF board as well. And so we're, we're glad to have those three um, uh, join the ranks and uh, again, appreciate uh, the service of uh, um, uh, Lex and John Janot, um, who've uh, uh, termed out. So um, appreciate that very much. Um, Breed Association um, also had a, a very active uh, caucus um, uh, activity online and um, uh, Shane Bedwell was uh, an incumbent and elected uh, for a second term uh, for the American Hereford Association. Uh, Kelly Retallick, um, uh, 
a staff member there in uh, AGI at American Angus, uh, elected to her first term, and uh, Matt Wolfuck uh, from uh, the American Shorthorn Association uh, elected as well. So we welcome them uh, uh, to the board and look forward to interaction um, in the upcoming meetings. Um, as uh, uh, Tommy also mentioned uh, Joe Mushrush. Uh, Mushrush Red Angus has served as uh, the vice president this past year um, and moves uh, into the, the president's role. And so um, we've got uh, lots of work ahead of us in the coming year and look forward to uh, Joe's uh, leadership and engagement there. Uh, Matt Perrier at Dell Banks uh, Angus um, uh, here near Eureka, Kansas, uh, elected as uh, vice president. And Matt's uh, been serving on the board for a number of years and has great institutional knowledge of, uh, of BIF and our mission. And uh, Tommy Clark will move into uh, the past president's role and stay uh, uh, engaged in our board activities. That's a key part of our sort of institutional knowledge is keeping those past presidents uh, in, involved. Um, with that, we're going to move into uh, uh, some other presentations. Um, and uh, those include uh, um, some of our scholarship award winners. And so um, Dr. Megan Rolfe uh, is an associate professor here in our animal breeding and genetics group at Kansas State University. Um, will present um, the um, uh, Baker Cundiff Awards and then um, um, we'll follow that with uh, Mr. Brian House um, to speak on the Roy A. Wallace Award. So um, Megan, if, uh, if you're on, I saw you here earlier. Yeah, if you'll unmute. There we go. Yeah, thank you, Bob, very much. And uh, thank all of you. Thank you to all of you for joining us here today for the awards ceremony. Um, it's my pleasure to announce the winners of the Baker Cundiff Scholarship, as Bob mentioned. And this scholarship, for those of you that are unfamiliar with it, is sponsored by, by BIF and was established to honor the contributions that Frank Baker and Larry Cundiff have made to genetic improvement. The winning essays are written by graduate students in either a master's or a PhD program, and their task is to review the literature on a topic of their choice. This year, we have broken from tradition somewhat and decided to award three essays this year rather than the standard one to two essays because of the incredibly large number of high quality essays that we received this year. Without further ado, it's my pleasure to announce the winners. Our first winner is Jonna Baller, who is a PhD student at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln. She, she is originally from Walden, Colorado, and her essay was all about the use of commercial data in genetic evaluations. So congratulations to you, Jonna. Excellent essay. Our second winner today is Caitlin Sarlo Davila who is originally from Fort Myers, Florida. She is currently pursuing a PhD at the University of Florida, and she wrote her essay on genetic improvement of thermotolerance in beef cattle. So congratulations to you, Caitlin. And our final winner today is actually another native Floridian, this time from Key West. Catherine Upshaw is pursuing a master's degree at Kansas State University, and the topic of her essay was collagen disorders in livestock high. So congratulations, Catherine. So before I finish off today, um, I would like to share one of the unifying comments from the judges that we had for this year's essays. And um, they were all very complimentary of the many wonderful submissions that we had. And congratulations again to our winners. Um, without delay, I will now turn things over to Brian House so that he can tell us about our winners this year for the Roy Wallace Scholarship. Great, thanks, Megan, and uh, um, I'll provide a, a little plug. Um, um, the uh, uh, essays that these uh, uh, three students submitted, the winning essays, are, are already posted um, on our uh, BIF, so beefimprovement.org slash symposium um, website, and uh, you can go and, and read those. Uh, I've had the chance to get a little preview, and uh, uh, great essays from these students, and uh, I think one of the most encouraging things is we've known for a, a number of years sort of a, a growing need for well-trained uh, graduate students in the field 
field of beef cattle genetics and you know application of some of the the really exciting technologies we have and uh, I, I'd say our future is in good hands we've got uh, some great students in the pipeline and uh, congratulate these three in particular um, on their uh, award-winning essays so with that, uh, um, uh, we'll be joined, uh, thank you, Megan, um, by Mr. Brian House. Brian um, has been uh, um, the uh, uh, Vice President of Beef Programs and Product Manager at, uh, at Select Sires, and um, um, uh, was a, a colleague and, and a long friend of uh, uh, Roy Wallace. And so with that, uh, Brian, uh, I think you're unmuted uh, um, and should have control if you want to advance the slides or I can, either way is fine. Um, you just let me know how to proceed. So thanks, so Brian. The, will those controls show up at the bottom for me, Bob? Yes, they should. If you kind of just hover there at the, the bottom left corner of the, the slide, you'll probably have to click it. There you go. There it is. Very good. Thank you, Bob. And thanks, Megan. It's my honor to be able to introduce the Roy Wallace VIF scholarship winners for 2020. Obviously, we're in a different time and place today than when the first VIF convention was held or when the first Roy Wallace VIF scholarship was awarded over a decade ago. However, the quest for knowledge and the passion to make our beef cattle better hasn't changed. And for this, we can all be grateful. Roy would be proud of the many accomplishments that we've made through our efforts, particularly in the areas of genetics and reproduction. We've come a long way and the Beef Improvement Federation has played a big role in this journey. This year, two young ladies will receive Roy Wallace BIF scholarships. Both display a desire to pursue careers in the beef industry and both exemplify what this scholarship stands for. And now I'd like to recognize our two award winners. The undergraduate scholarship award belongs to Ellie Moon. Currently enrolled at South Dakota State University in Animal Science, Okay, got out of control there. Currently enrolled at South Dakota State University, Ellie grew up on a ranch. She loves calving season and spent last summer working for cattle resources where she was exposed to virtually every aspect of beef cattle reproduction. Upon graduation, Ellie plans to enroll in vet school with the goal to become a DVM. Her future plans have her working and living to serve ranchers in rural America helping to keep their livestock healthy. Congratulations to Ellie. The Graduate Scholarship Award this year goes to Lindsay Upperman, and Lindsay is already an active BIF participant, having attended three previous meetings. With a bachelor's degree from Kansas State, then a master's from UC Davis, and now enrolled as a PhD student with Dr. Spangler at UNL, Lindsay's had opportunities to travel internationally and collaborate with world leaders in the field of beef genetics. She indicates her primary interest is applying technologies and genetic research into the management practices of seed stock and commercial producers. Congratulations, Lindsay. All yours, Bob. Great, thank you, Brian. We appreciate uh, you joining us to present the uh, Roy A. Wallace Awards, uh, the two uh, uh, really outstanding uh, recipients there. And so congratulations to both of them. Um, as we continue our uh, discussion of uh, awards or presentation of awards rather, um, our next one is to uh, present the BIF BIF Ambassador Award. And uh, the BIF Ambassador Award is presented each year um, to um, a uh, member of the media um, for his or her efforts in spreading the news of BIF and its principles to a larger audience. And so with that, uh, we've asked uh, uh, Ms. Shauna Hermel, uh, who's the editor with Angus Media, uh, to make the presentation for our BIF Ambassador Award winner for 2020. Good afternoon. It's my honor to present this year's BIF Ambassador Award. 
Each year, BIF recognizes a member of the media for his or her efforts in spreading the news of BIF and its principles to a larger audience. The daughter of a registered nurse and the founding president of the University of North Georgia, Gainesville, this year's recipient learned the importance of performance testing the BIF way while working at Berry College's bull test station near Mount Berry. Though she went to school to learn how to take care of her horse, she says she quickly learned she adored cattle. EPDs were in the formative stages during her time in graduate school at the University of Georgia. And with Drs. Curly Cook and Dan Daniels, both on her graduate committee, she got a more in-depth look at performance programs in BIF. This year's recipient says she accidentally launched her career writing a short story, later published in a school paper, about her experience at an AI school. Then, while attending a stalker finisher tour, she met John Leidner, an editor at Progressive Farmer. He encouraged her to write an article for the publication, then hired her that summer to work on the Sunbelt Expo program. In addition to Progressive Farmer, she is a field editor at the Angus Journal and the Angus Beef Bulletin, and she writes for the Gulf Coast Cattlemen. Throughout her 40-year career, she's written for Farm Journal, including its Hogs Today, Dairy Today, and Beef Today publications. Though her main focus is on cattle, she has written about subjects ranging from ballet dancing poultry farmers to daylily growers. She has a passion for those she writes about, and it shows in both her writing and the photos she takes to document her stories. She has a knack for taking complicated subjects and revealing their practical application through the experience of fellow producers. Combine that with her love of cattle and people, and writing to support BIF was only natural. It's my honor to present this year's BIF Ambassador Award to Miss Becky Mills. Congratulations, Becky. Great, congratulations to Becky, uh, an outstanding uh, uh, media uh, person and uh, uh, spokesman for the beef industry and, and certainly uh, a deserving award winner this year. So again, Becky Mills, uh, our 2020 BIF Ambassador Award recipient. Um, as we do a little bit of housekeeping, uh, we'll be uh, just about finished up for today's uh, program. Uh, a little bit of a preview for tomorrow. Um, our general sessions start um, uh, at noon central time, and uh, we'll have uh, uh, two speakers in our, our program tomorrow um, uh, with a, a bit of awards program in between. Our, so our first speaker will be uh, Sean Darcy, Director of uh, Market Research for National Cattlemen's Beef Association, um, talking about consumer market research that they've been engaged in and uh, helping us learn more about what our consumers say they need um, and what they want. Um, and then uh, BIF Awards program tomorrow includes the uh, announcement of the uh, 2020 BIF Commercial Producer of the Year Award recipient and those nominees as well as the Pioneer Award presentations. And uh, we'll have some, uh, hopefully weather permitting, uh, some comments uh, from uh, Dr. Jane Parrish as she retires as the Executive Director. Um, we'll follow that with uh, our second speaker of the day, and that'll be uh, perspectives from the end user, um, what we need and what we want, uh, presented by Dr. Henry Zerbe. Uh, Henry is the Vice President of Protein Procurement and Innovation, and Innovation excuse me, um, with Wendy's Quality Supply Chain Co-op. So a big user of beef products and uh, certainly a, a, a face that uh, uh, many of you may be familiar with. Uh, Dr. Zerbe served as a Department Head of Animal Sciences at The Ohio State University. University um, for a number of years and a recognized expert in the meat science field. So we look forward to those uh, activities tomorrow. Again, start at noon central time. And uh, we appreciate everybody joining us uh, today and look forward to uh, your participation tomorrow. Again, noon central. And uh, thanks again to uh, our sponsor, um, our patron level sponsor for today, um, Zoetis. And we encourage you all to visit uh, beefimprovement.org slash symposium um, and visit our virtual training show and see what uh, products and services um, our various sponsors may have that uh, could benefit you. Um, so with that, uh, we'll sign off for today. Thanks everybody for joining us and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow.
state of Iowa and Iowa State University are proud to host the 2021 Beef Improvement Federation Annual Research Symposium and Convention. The convention will be located in downtown Des Moines with easy access to the airport, hotels, and local restaurants. Iowa State University is just north with its research and teaching farms. Join us in Iowa and experience how Iowa provides the beef industry with innovation to application.